Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Randy Thompson, sitting in for the vacationing Sam Shad. Today we're talking with Tom Fennell, the partner and managing broker of Dixon Commercial Group, about how real estate is booming in Northern Nevada. Coming up on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes it is, how may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmakers Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And we're back on Nevada Newsmakers, and I'm very happy to have Tom Fennell, the principal and managing broker for Dixon Commercial Group. Good to see you. Nice to be here. You staying busy? That. We are, yeah. We're very busy right now. <laughs> so, during COVID, or after COVID, well, during COVID, we're still in COVID, um, people were sent home from work. Mm -hmm. Office space probably became, you know, lots of rental, you know, rental space opened up for offices. And I remember talking to you about, oh man, office space is just going to be so out there, and everyone, you know, it's be so much freed up office space. And you said, no, I'm a working dad with a young child at home. <laughs> I can't stay home and work all the time. Um, so we're now seeing that office space really isn't as open and available as we expected. Yeah, I mean, th there were certainly some some challenges that came up during the last 24 months, but overall, you know, our office market has been relatively flat. There was some some sublease space and a little bit of negative net absorption in the last year, but for the most part, we've maintained it's been pretty flat here. Um, I, th you know, there's a lot of data right now that points to, f especially with Fortune 500 companies that really want to have. Off an office presence um, and in some form or fashion. I think we're looking at um, a lot of companies are looking at how they use the space and really kind of the, the pandemic has shifted. You know, the, the original trend was we went to all this heavy, heavy office, really dense office, open space. The pandemic has had obviously some challenges with social distancing on that. But so, you know, the office is going to need to continue to evolve. But my opinion is that we're not going to see uh, we're still going to see a very, very viable office market, um, especially here where we're, you know, a, a lower cost provider to areas like the Bay Area where, you you know, we're half or less of the cost. So you can come here, have a great quality of life and a lower cost office. Uh, you've seen companies like uh, some of the biggest, you know, office users expand during COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw Google, <laughs> Facebook, Apple all expanded their footprints across the country during the pandemic when everybody else, when there was a lot of quote unquote experts saying, oh, the office is dead or the, you know, so obviously these companies that have 
a vested interest in you know their products and their people feel differently than you know a lot of the talking heads that think that there's issues with office and in some you know in some cases there are especially for antiquated buildings and you know we're going to have to office landlords are obviously going to have to adapt to what the tenants want um, but my opinion is that there's still going to be a very a very much a need for office um, when you look at training and culture and retention and, and even employee mental health mm -hmm. the office bring you know there's a lot of things that and a lot of data that are still pointing to uh, both uh, especially employers but also employees you know wanting to be back in the office. Well, you can only communicate so well on Zoom mm -hmm. and a lot of the work gets done around the around the, the water cooler. Yeah. People kind of brainstorm and, and share ideas and you can't really do that unless you keep the Zoom camera open 24 hours but so it makes sense to kind of get back into the office and I think you're right I'm, we're seeing now that they're adapting that environment a little bit. Yeah absolutely and you're, and you're seeing some hybrid schedules and you know maybe certain employees that'll have a, a Monday and a Friday where they're at home or a Friday at home and then the rest of the week they're in the office, but that still necessitates the need for a physical office. Yeah. You know, and, and then when you when you look at, you know, the ability to, you know, to have the water cooler talk, that, that kind of that culture and, and, and connection with your coworkers and just, you know, the there was a lot of data that came out during the pandemic of people were working more hours at home than they were in the office, which isn't necessarily a good thing either. So, mm -hmm. I, again, I think there's a lot of data and a lot of employers and, and employees both that, that really have, it was sort of a nice experiment, but they definitely, it, it hasn't, I don't think the data is gonna point to, oh, well, we'll just continue to stay this way. There's definitely gonna be changes. Um, we're definitely gonna need to adapt to the space, you know, changes that, that I think companies are, are looking at, and that's still very fluid, um, but we, we still see office as a, uh, a definitely, a, you know, a, gonna be fine. And I was surprised to hear that you guys actually go out and recruit companies. You guys are out there looking for people to come to Reno mm -hmm. and Washoe County and the Tri-Counties and stuff, because you do a lot of stuff at Trick and Story mm -hmm. County. Um, are pe people are still moving to Reno, aren't they? People are, yeah. For I mean, we've had so much growth historically in the last decade between our in our industrial market, and we'll, we'll talk dive into that a little bit later. And, mm -hmm. You know, we've had we've obviously had industrial and manufacturing be a huge growth here. We're starting to see. You know, we haven't had quite as much on the office side as we'd like. We want to see. We're starting to see some good, you know, white collar jobs coming here. But mm -hmm. we definitely want to see more of that, especially as our region becomes a little bit more expensive. You know, we're battling um, a little bit of uh, of an affordability issue. Mm -hmm. So those those higher paying jobs and kind of the professional service white collar jobs. Um, can come into a little bit more expensive market. Um, so that's something that we need to adapt to as a region to continue to attract those. We definitely provide a lot of things, both from a quality of life and an affordability from an office standpoint, uh, as compared to markets like the Bay Area and LA, which you know is a, a good thing for, for us to recruit companies in. Um, and the image of, of Reno has just improved so much in the last decade, which, is, which has been helpful. Um, another thing on the office side that's been really strong that I think is overlooked is the medical office market here. Mm. Um, we've really seen a lot of expansion uh, in, in just in the hospital networks here. Renown has, is expanding pretty, pretty rapidly and uh, UHS is also expanding and building a new campus here. Bo both of those hospital networks are building pretty large third-party buildings for, um, at, that are attached to South Meadows campus right here and the new UHS campus over on Longley that'll have you know anywhere from 80 to 100,000 square feet of speculative space which is for Reno is a, a bigger a bigger building and we've seen a lot of growth in the medical market right now it's the that market's performing very well well, we need more doctors in our area. We know that. Yeah. So, but they need a place to work out of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and as our population has grown, and and you know, so is the need for medical services. And that's one thing that isn't affected by COVID. You know, is you can't uh, telemedicine can only get you so far. So we're seeing, um, you know, all areas from you know primary care providers all the way to surgical and specialty and you know it, everything under the sun, dental, all all expanding, and, and that market's been very healthy even even through COVID. No, that's very that's good for our community. That's mm -hmm. for sure. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Get in on the Tamara Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamara Casino. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. 
Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again, and by blazing new trails in large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, Get in on the Tamarack Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And we're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Tom Fennell from the Dixon Commercial Group. So I interviewed uh, Michael Dermody a couple days ago, and he talked about how Reno is in such a prime location for mm -hmm. between I-80 and the uh, and the rail lines, and how we're kind of the center of the West Coast when it comes to distribution. So industrial has just taken off. I mean, when you drive up into the North Valleys and see these huge 100,000 plus industrial space, it's manufacturing, uh, logistics, it's booming, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's been it, it's been definitely uh, one of the highlights of, of our development world here in Northwest Nevada. And and Michael's right, we're, we're Reno and Northwest Nevada are set up very strategically from, an, from a logistics and distribution standpoint. And so we've seen for the really the past, you know, it kind of is what got us out of the recession, in my opinion, has been the growth in our, not only in distribution, but also advanced manufacturing in, in the region. Uh, has been a, a big reason for our success and kind of what pulled us out of the r recession, you know, a dec over a decade now. And the growth in that has been really phenomenal here. We've you've seen um, a lot of growth in North Valleys, uh, in South Reno where you can find land, mm -hmm. uh, and then also in the I-80 I corridor in Tahoe Reno Industrial, and then now we're starting to see a lot more in Fernley. So the the mix of distribution, manufacturing, uh, data center, you know, fault kind of mm -hmm. falls under that, uh, has really been super, very, very strong here and the amount of uh, both companies and uh, capital that that's brought into the region and jobs is really, is really uh, been a great thing for us. To some extent, Tesla, I can't say Tesla started this, but Tesla definitely put Reno on the map, at least PR-wise. Yeah, we, I, think, I think we were, you know, we were heading a, a good direction specific to industrial and we were, we were certainly attracting a lot of really quality companies um, and we had a lot of development going on pre-Tesla, but Tesla turned, it was such a household name yeah. that turned that spotlight onto the region where people, you, you could talk to people across the country that had heard about that transaction, you know, it was the largest warehouse under one roof in the country. And so, you know, when you, when you get that kind of press, it certainly brings uh, other, other, you know, eyeballs and a spotlight on the region, which was great. And they, you know, they're now one of the largest employers up here. and and have, you know, it's definitely brought a lot to the, to the Tahoe Industrial Park and to the region. Were you surprised at how full, <laughs> how quickly the trick got filled up? I remember when Lance Gilman and Roger Norman talked about it and they were looking at over the next 20 years, we're gonna fill this whole space up and they filled it up in what, eight? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was like half of what they expected. Yeah, they, they definitely had a vision there. Um, I mean, there still is some available land, some, some developable land out there that, that they end up selling to the blockchains and, and there's some third party owners, but they, they had a vision with where industrial in the region would go. And I think, you know, 30 years ago, if you thought what would be there now, people probably would have, you know, told you you're crazy. But they, they definitely um, had a vision with that and just overall where our industrial market has gone and, and really I think where, the tr where our trends have gone as a country and industrial used to be, you know, office and retail were kind of the, 
uh, more of the, of the darlings of the investment world. And now industrial is everybody's focus, uh, not everybody's, but it's, a, it's such a, a star in the, in the real estate world now because of how our trends as consumers are and just shipping and, and, and how we consume products. So our industrial market has just been super strong here. The amount of capital coming in has been you know, pretty phenomenal. And yeah, I was gonna ask, do you have a number on what has been the investments into um, the specifically construction of new construction of industrial? Well, we have, you know, from a from a numbers standpoint, just you know, for 2022, we have um, I think over six million square feet expected just in 22. So there's nine nine speculative buildings wow. um, supposed to come on. Our vacancy is at three and a half percent right now. Uh, we've had really strong. I think there's four and a half million square feet of construction that's com been completed year to date. So we've had a really strong development cycle. The biggest challenge we have now is almost more available land. Mm -hmm. It's specific to Washoe County. It's, it's not so much the um, the demand on the tenant side, that's there, and the user side. It's really the, we're starting to run out of industrial land in, in, the, in the Truckee Meadows. And that's why you're seeing, you know, now development head further east into Tahoe Reno Industrial and, and f Fernley as well in mm -hmm. that corridor. So. Well, I know that there is talk of a Washoe County Lands Act, similar to a Southern Nevada Lands mm -hmm. Act, where we can start essentially getting some of the BLM land around here. Do we know where that is politically? I mean, it, Mark Amaday has indicated that it's it's still alive. Yeah, I think it is. I know. think, you know, there there's a lot of that land that's within the sphere of influence of uh, Reno and Sparks mm -hmm. that will probably end up, you know, in a lands bill here and then one of the next session so um, that would probably free up some some developable land but a lot of that land is also not you know easily developable either from yeah. from a topography and infrastructure standpoint and so, water minor detail yeah <laughs> some of those things so I, I that's again I think you'll see the our valley really build out for our industrial capabilities in the near future and then start to, you'll start to see uh, more construction head east and, and south from a from an industrial standpoint. Well, and you're going into now Lyon County and Story County, mm -hmm. probably even in a little bit to Carson and Douglas. So our region, you know, it's no longer just Washoe County. It is now, when Brian Bonifant does a study of Northern Nevada, it's now five counties. Yeah, we're really, and we started have started to look at us as much more of an MSA for that region where you're, you're Minden to Reno to, to Fernley and that kind of triangle. And from, a sh from an industrial standpoint, that I-80 corridor between the highway and the rail um, is definitely sort of the vein of that, of the success of that, being right on that from a, from a distribution standpoint. And the fact that we have a river that runs through it makes it very difficult to expand the river, the uh, road and the rail, huh? Yeah, they're, they're, and that may be part, you know, part of the infrastructure thing is they're talking about so a road, you know, connecting through uh, the Virginia Range down to TRI, which might alleviate some of that traffic. But. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, we've just, our, our industrial market has been uh, performed extremely well. Um, it's been a big reason for the amount of job creation here. Yeah. Um, and so we, we see that just continuing to, to do well here. Rents are, you know, up quite a bit. It's, it's, it's been a strong market. Well, we're going to so. come back and talk about rents right after this. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through 8 throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your air conditioner breaks down today. We fix it today. Why sweat for days while your air is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get cool again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 or see us online at nevadaheating.com. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, the fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. 
Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas Season 2 today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And we're back on Nevada Newsmakers with Tom Fennell of the Dixon Commercial Group. So let's briefly talk retail, because briefly retail is just not doing well, I'm guessing. Uh, you've got a lot of, uh, well, so being a small business owner myself, uh, business is closed, but then business is open. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's just a lot of, probably a lot of um, just flipping of, of retail space. But are there big box spaces that just aren't getting filled? Where do you kind of see retail going in Northern Nevada? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, I think retail was seeing some headwinds, obviously, pre, pre-COVID, where specific to kind of the, the big box model um, had some headwinds, you know, outside of the pandemic. I think what we've seen, in my opinion, is you're starting to see companies that um, have embraced sort of bringing in e-commerce into their uh, business model has has been critical for them to sort of adapt and and survive in a changing environment. And I think you'll continue to see that in the retail world where um, their bricks and mortar are part of their e-commerce strategy as well. What you've seen, you know, we saw grow in during the last 24 months, we saw grocery perform very well here. And so a lot of our new development has uh, been focused around sort of a, a grocery anchor that has supporting services, quick service restaurants. You can't close. You, a, you can't close a grocery store in a, in you know a, when you're having a lockdown. So yeah, those are that, that's an essential you, business. So. Yeah, pe- people got to eat, and and yeah. uh, you know, and and then the supporting retail around that mm-hmm. um, has been you know, still performing pretty well, and and the the investment market for retail, uh, specifically single tenant net lease, has performed pretty well even throughout the throughout the last 24 months. So. Um, you know, the, the retail landscape is always shifting uh, mm-hmm. with our consumer demands. I think that'll, that is going to drive changes to where you're not going to see as much of the, the old school big box stores. Um, but we've seen, you know, definitely infill development be successful in Reno and kind of strategic retail locations. Um, and you're seeing just a, a change in that in that marketplace. But overall, you know, we still there's still obviously you know viable retail developments that are going to happen here. But you're you're going to see a shift from the bigger box type stores into more experiential retail or things like grocery anchored being driving this driving the development. Well, so what you're seeing now too, switching a little bit to the uh, multifamily mm-hmm. uh, ranchera that has a live work play mm-hmm. kind of idea red. Which I I think it's a stupid name, but uh, the old Park Lane Mall. Uh, first floor is restaurants and stores, and upstairs is yep. apartments and condos. So, how multifamily is just booming here, isn't it? Yeah, our multifamily market's been extremely strong, and you're seeing that you know drive a lot of. This. You're seeing mixed use developments be across, nationally be you know a big part of where you'll see a, a mix of office, hospitality, multifamily, retail all together, um, and those are great examples in our market where we've seen some really nice. Uh, developments between Ranchera, Red, um, which are mixed-use developments in, in different forms or fashion. So our multifamily market here has been extremely strong for really the last decade. A lot of the the trends are just have made it very viable for developers. We've seen um, very low vacancy rates right now. Even even during the pandemic, when everybody thought vacancy would spike, we saw vacancy in northern northern Nevada actually drop. Right now, with the last five quarters, we've dropped from three and a half percent to just, I think, a percent and a half, one point six percent. So wow. we've seen re- really strong fundamentals in the in the multifamily market, even through rough patches in the you know, in the last twenty four months. And so that's obviously spurred a lot of development. And you see, you know, you see apartments going all over town. And they're so. getting filled up. Yeah, people are moving here. That's <laughs> then the, yeah. the question is, are we overbuilding? Are we overbuilding? Yeah. But if and can you, rent come down? Because rents are amazingly high right now. Yeah, yeah. The ch- yeah, they are. And the, and one of the challenges is driving, you know, the cost of construction, the cost yeah. to buy land and the cost in title is not getting cheaper. And that that ultimately drives your rent. So I don't see rents changing substantially here because our until our construction costs and and it costs to go through the entitlement process and and the time with that change. So we are seeing some affordable products being brought to market. You're starting to see some different affordable projects come on come into town and being entitled and developed. Um, but largely, our market rate apartments are you know what what's been constructed. I think we had. 
um, about 6,500 that mm -hmm. are in, in, in construction right now and about 3,500 completed last year. Yeah. Just last quarter, we had four buildings, market rate buildings completed here. So definitely been a, a, a very strong market and, and with our single family market being expensive as well, that's driven a lot of people to being you know apartment dwellers. Well, yeah, you can't afford to buy a house right now in Reno and on the average salary of 65 to 85,000 a year, you can't buy a house. Yeah, it's a real challenge. It is challenging. No. And, and I do think, you know, hopefully we'll see rents continue to sort of level off as this new product comes online because there are a fair amount of units coming um, online, which should should help that rent uh, be a little bit more leveled out. But yep. again, we're, it's, it's expensive to build right now. So Well, and the challenge too, you've got legislature as well as city council that keep saying, go build affordable housing. But if you do so, you've got to put in this infrastructure and that infrastructure, and you've got to pay for this and you've got to do that. You, they're making it more expensive yeah, to, it's, to build. It's difficult, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's difficult to build and it's not, it hasn't been easier uh, right now. We're not making it easy on the- Yeah, the, putting a lot more regulations and requirements in place that drive up the cost of building. Yep, which yeah. in turn makes it the rent harder to pencil for. Yeah. So just projecting out next 10 years, you feel comfortable about where Reno is on the commercial real estate side? I do, yeah. I think we, we uh, the fundamentals of our area are still very strong. You know, we're, as long as we continue to be a, a, a pro-business state, you know, we're, we're a favorable tax climate for companies and for people to be in. Uh, we have a great quality of life here. So I do feel very strongly about, you know, we have some great fundamentals like our, you know, the distribution set up here. And I think we're going to continue to be a very, a very good market. Um, we just, you know, we're, we need to keep our, our costs down and, and make mm -hmm. sure we're, you know, we're doing the right things from a political standpoint to conti continue to attract companies and businesses and people that want to live here. Yep. Well, that's a good parting message. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You bet. We'll be back right after this. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Thanks for watching and listening. You can catch us anytime on our new YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers.